in a previous video we talked about the inheritance pattern of uh, autosomal recessive disorders how both parents must be carriers for the disease and then one in fourth of their offspring have a chance of being affected by the disease we saw that these were some of the examples of autosomal recessive disorders commonly found around the world sickle cell anemia phenylketonuria cystic fibrosis and thalassemia in this video we'll explore a little bit more about these diseases individually first we'll start uh, with sickle cell anemia so sickle cell anemia from the word anemia itself you might be able to guess that it has something to do with blood something to do with hemoglobin and you're absolutely right so the thing about hemoglobin is that it is made up of two alpha chains and two beta chains it has two alpha chains and two beta chains linked to one another forming the hemoglobin protein and the gene that is involved in sickle cell anemia is the gene for the beta chain the hbb gene hb is for hemoglobin hemoglobin beta chain hbb gene this is the normal sequence of the uh, hbb gene found on chromosome 11 and this is the normal protein that this gene encodes you know just a part of this gene and a part of this protein but what happens in sickle cell anemia is that there is a small point mutation in this position if you take a look at this position a and t they swap places with one another we saw this happen in the previous video and we learned that there could be drastic consequences to that and this is one such example where it's just a simple swapping of the nucleotides between the 5 prime strand and the 3 prime strand can lead to drastic consequences instead of glutamic acid being produced in the sixth position because of the small mutation what's going to happen is that it's going to be replaced with the amino acid valine glutamic acid has been replaced with valine glutamic acid is a hydrophilic amino acid whereas valine is a hydrophobic amino acid we learnt in the previous video that there are primary secondary tertiary and quaternary structures to proteins right the hydrophilicity of these amino acids is very important in the formation of these structures and because one hydrophilic amino acid is replaced with one hydrophobic amino acid the hemoglobin b chain is not able to fold properly which makes this normal disc shaped red blood cell take on a sickle shape a sickle shape like this under certain conditions those conditions are known as low oxygen tension conditions and they are often caused by bouts of stress or dehydration or during high altitudes when there is less oxygen in the altitude or even heavy exercise can trigger this uh, conversion of this normal red blood cell into a sickle shaped red blood cell the body recognizes the sickle shaped red blood cell as uh, something that is uh, foreign or dangerous to the body and then it begins to destroy these red blood cells so the uh, cells do not receive enough oxygen that is one thing and the other thing is that the normal uh, red blood cells they are disc shaped because they can flow easily within the capillaries but in the case of these sickle shaped red blood cells they cannot pass through the capillaries as easily as the normal ones so they block the capillaries they get blocked within the capillaries they don't allow the normal cells to pass through either this leads to again oxygen starvation in the tissues which could lead to conditions like hypoxia and even tissue death because cells need oxygen to survive right without oxygen that cells and tissues they begin to die one interesting thing about sickle cell anemia is that it is mostly found in the population like sub-saharan africa where there is high prevalence of the malarial disease malaria which is caused by a parasite is very common in these areas and malarial parasite absolutely needs this regular functioning rbc to survive it cannot survive in this sickle shaped rbc some studies suggest that sickle cell anemia developed or originated as an evolutionary advantage to these people to protect themselves against malaria see malaria is a much more deadly disease compared to sickle cell anemia it can be regulated it can be managed although there is no cure for it it can be managed people do survive but malaria is such a high deadly disease that it kills a lot of people in this area so scientists have 
um, come up with an explanation that this disease has evolved as a mechanism to protect those people against malaria. Just think, think about it. A disease evolving as a protection against another disease. So weird, isn't it? Next, we'll talk about another genetic disorder known as phenylketonuria. Phenylketonuria belongs to a list of disorders known as inborn errors of metabolism. These inborn errors of metabolism have to do with malfunctioning enzymes. And the enzyme that is involved in this disease is known as phenylalanine hydroxylase or PAH. So this mutation that causes phenylketonuria is found in the gene that encodes for PAH which is found on chromosome number 12. So what does this gene do? It codes for this phenylalanine hydroxylase and what does this enzyme do? It is involved in converting the amino acid phenylalanine into another amino acid tyrosine. This is absolutely necessary for the metabolism of phenylalanine without which this begins to accumulate within the body. And this is what leads to all the problems associated with phenylketonuria. Phenylalanine needs to be converted to tyrosine so it can be metabolized and removed from the body without this enzyme because the mutation produces very less enzyme or sometimes no enzyme also. The people with phenylketonuria what happens is that they begin to accumulate phenylalanine in their bodies which is not good. Because that can cause problems like intellectual disability, a small head, seizures and a musty odor to the sweat and urine. This is uh, one of the uh, diagnostic criteria for diagnosing phenylketonuria. A blood test of course will let us know whether that person has phenylketonuria or not. But also this can be observed in a lot of people with phenylketonuria. They have a musty smelling sweat and urine. There is no way to treat this disease as it is common for such genetic disorders. There is no treatment or cure as of yet. But the way to control this disease is by regulating the amount of phenylalanine in the diet. You can consume a diet which does not have this amino acid at all. Having low levels of phenylalanine or no phenylalanine in the diet can help control this disease. Another autosomal recessive disorder is cystic fibrosis. This is due to a mutation in this gene that is known as cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator CFTR gene. I know it's quite a mouthful but what the CFTR does is that it is a transmembrane protein. Now under normal conditions when there is no mutation in the CFTR gene, this, this protein channel, this transmembrane protein channel, it functions properly. Because of the functioning of this protein channel, the mucus secretions, especially in the lungs, they are normal. They are produced in their normal thin consistency. But in the case of a mutated CFTR gene, this protein channel is blocked. You can see right here that it is blocked. Because of this, the mucus secretions in the lung end up becoming thick. Now this doesn't affect just the lungs, it also affects any organ where there is secretion like the stomach, even the intestines and also organs like the liver. But the primary organ that is affected because of cystic fibrosis is the lungs. Because of this thick mucus, because of the thick secretions in the lungs, the person is uh, in danger of getting frequent repeated respiratory infections like pneumonia. This also leads to difficulty in breathing. Of course, if lungs are affected, it means that there is difficulty in breathing and in the process of digestion because the stomach and intestines are also affected, the liver is also affected. This person will experience difficulty in digesting their food as well. Last, let's take a look at thalassemia. Now, thalassemia is also another type of anemia which affects the uh, red blood cells or the hemoglobin within the red blood cells. Now, I just mentioned that normal hemoglobin has two alpha and two beta chains, right? This is how a normal hemoglobin looks like. This is beta chain 1, beta chain 2, alpha chain 1 and alpha chain 2. In the case of a normal hemoglobin, this is how it looks like. But there are two types of thalassemia which affects the production of alpha chains and beta chains. 
if the alpha production is affected alpha chain production is affected it is known as alpha thalassemia it is caused due mutation in two genes hba1 and hba2 found in chromosome number 16 each of these genes have two alleles each so a total of four alleles are affected in the case of uh, alpha thalassemia now because of this mutation in these two genes not enough alpha globin is produced so alpha chains are not produced in sufficient quantities so the beta chains that are produced they begin to polymerize with one another forming an a very inefficient hemoglobin inefficient hemoglobin in the case of beta thalassemia the hbb gene is affected again we learned when we talked about uh, sickle cell anemia that the hbb gene is present in chromosome 11 right in the case of beta thalassemia the hbb gene is affected again there is a mutation in the hbb gene which causes lower levels of beta globin to be produced in this case the alpha chains they begin to polymerize with one another again forming inefficient hemoglobin so in both cases alpha and beta thalassemia because uh, there is no proper hemoglobin that is formed this leads to low production of normal hemoglobin that is what causes anemia in thalassemia now this disease is also common in the sub saharan africa and in other regions like greece the middle east and like the sickle cell anemia disease thalassemia is also believed to have evolved as a protection against the malarial disease now how does thalassemia differ from sickle cell anemia because both are conditions that are affecting hemoglobin and the production of red blood cells right in thalassemia you have low production of hemoglobin you don't have enough quantities of hemoglobin in the blood but in the case of sickle cell anemia you have hemoglobin but it is an abnormal hemoglobin so you can think of thalassemia as a quantitative disease that affects the amount of hemoglobin in the blood whereas sickle cell anemia can be thought of as a qualitative disorder that produces abnormal hemoglobin in the blood ultimately in both disorders the delivery of oxygen to all cells is affected but the way that it is caused the low oxygen condition is caused differs between thalassemia and sickle cell anemia so this is all about a few examples of autosomal recessive disorders